Now we go to a, a different one, second one, Romans 12, 1. And this one, I will just use this. I won't look at the points so that uh, that way uh, maybe you can uh, understand it better and then uh, pick up the feeling better and then I will show you the points later. Okay, Romans 12, 1 to 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove. In Greek, it can mean test, examine, approve, or discern. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Okay, so here it talks about how we can enter God's perfect will. So I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that Paul encouraged the Christian, by the mercies of God, by God's grace, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, that you present your whole person as a living sacrifice. In Old Testament, the sacrifice, the, the sheep and the ox will be killed, but we are living. We offer our body as a living sacrifice. And this is holy. It is set apart for God. And it's holy in the sense that it's not a sinful way of living. It's a holy way of living. Acceptable to God. God will accept it. Which is your reasonable service. It is reasonable. It is something we should do because God has blessed us so many ways. So we should, uh, it's reasonable for us to serve God. And do not be conformed to the world. So we have to get rid of the dirty part of our lives. Do not follow the ways of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So our mind has to be renewed by God that is uh, transformed, changed by the renewing of our mind. The whole mind has to be changed by the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God that we meditate on the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will guide us to obey Him. The more we love God, serve God, obey God, the more our mind will be changed that will see God is the best. When I follow God, that is the best, and the best thing will happen to me. Then we may prove, then we may test, examine, approve, that we'll find out, that we'll discern and know, prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So that will prove what is the good one. The, uh, the, the will of God is the good will, is a will to bless people and acceptable, acceptable to all people, acceptable to God, and perfect, it's perfect. God's plan, planning is perfect. Man's planning is imperfect. Now this is comparison, contrast. When people plan something, very often it doesn't come out the way, the same way as he plans. Many people plan to earn a lot of money, they don't get the money they want. Even when they get the money, they don't have happiness. But God has a perfect plan that will bless us, that will give us strength, that our whole life will be blessed by God. So His will is good. He's wonderful. His will will be, uh, will be perfect. It can change our whole life. So how can we enter this plan? This Bible verses tell us that. Okay, now first, we can look at the negative and positive examples. Now the theme of the message is how to seek and follow God's perfect will. How to seek and follow God's perfect will. That many Christians, they, uh, you know, they, they don't think there's a perfect will. They think that, oh, life is terrible, life is difficult, God is not fair to me. So many people have negative thinking. They don't let the Word of God change the thinking. It's very important that we read the Bible and remember the Bible verses and apply the Bible to our lives. So we know that, yes, God has a wonderful plan. God has a wonderful plan to bless us. But many people don't believe that. Therefore, they don't enter God's perfect plan. And now also they, uh, they're lazy. They're not willing to give the bodies a living sacrifice. They, 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 they don't have the motivation. 
They just do things in front of people. They just want to attract people's attention. They don't have the motivation to serve God from the heart. And they don't present the body as a living sacrifice. And then they they are conformed to the world. They follow the way of the world. They just uh, play with a cell phone. They just uh, watch TV. They just have, want to have fun. They just want to eat and sleep and have sex. So that's all they want. They just want the way of the world. And even some Christians, when they date, they just think of having sex. Now, as Christians, we should realize that this is breaking God's perfect will for our lives. If we have sex before marriage, it's going to break, destroy God's perfect plan. God's plan is not like that. When we sin, God will lose trust in us. In us. He knows that this person doesn't love God. He cannot pour His blessings into our lives. So there are many Christians who just, they're following the way of the world. Even Christians, when they see beautiful women in a church, they just chase after the, the women and they just want to have sex. And, and that is, they didn't realize that it's destructive. They, they didn't realize the warnings in the Bible. Now, I, mostly I encourage people with God's grace. But we also should let people know about the warning of God. But what we should be mainly motivated by God's grace. God has a wonderful plan. If I love God, God will prepare for me a wonderful spouse or no spouse. Then I stay single and I can serve God all my lifetime. And if God prepares a spouse for me, it will be the best one. And I want to love the person with all my... Uh, as myself and then I can build up my marriage so that is following God's way but many Christians don't they just pursue their own their own fun they pursue their own desires and the mind is not changed many Christians their life the hearts are not changed even after they believe in Jesus they're still selfish they're still easily angered by people they they get angry easily, they get frustrated easily, they lose hope, they lose joy, they don't have strength from, the, from God, and they don't have wisdom from God because they, they don't read the Bible, they don't apply the Bible. So those are negative examples. And positive example, there are some Christians who can bless so many people. Like Reinhard Bonnke in Africa, he has led many people to Christ. There are many evangelists. There are many people who have blessed, who has blessed many people. And if we all love God and serve God wholeheartedly, then God will use us to bless more people. And God's nature, God is the perfect planner. He can plan the perfect plan for our lives. And He can give us, He has the ability, now these are His internal ability. He has the ability to give us um, the plan, to give us the provision, the opportunities to uh, go into this perfect plan. He has ability for, to help us to enter this perfect will of God. He has the ability to give us the provision. And then His grace. First, He chose us in eternity, chose us to be saved and he wrote our plan the plan for our lives in heaven in his book that is Psalm 139 verse 6 verses 16 to 18 that all the days of my life before one of them came to be has been written in your book that God has written in his book his plan but many people did not enter the plan because they did not offer the body as a living sacrifice then they're not they're not uh, they, they're conformed to the world and then they're not transformed by the renewal of their mind. God has written the plan for them. So God has done His part. God has a wonderful plan. And God changes our heart. God works in our heart so that we'll obey Him. So that we'll enter God's plan. So that we'll live a, an abundant life. But many Christians don't follow God's will. They don't love God. They don't obey God. They don't offer the body as a living sacrifice. Then they don't enter God's plan. And then, but then there are Christians who live out His perfect plan and they have blessed so many people. Okay? And so God's nature is He has ability to plan. He has ability to give us blessings. And then He works in our heart. You know, He, he wants to change our heart 
He works in our heart, change our heart so that we humble ourselves and we believe it trusts in God's perfect plan. He motivate us to follow His plan. He motivate us to change our heart so that we want to follow His plan. And He give us strength and wisdom to continue to persevere, to continue to trust in Him so that we have the strength uh, to follow His plan. And we'll improve gradually. We don't change instantly. We improve gradually. So we count all the blessings of God. God is so good. God has given me so many blessings. God has changed my life. God has given me this perfect plan and God has changed my heart so that I pursue this perfect plan. And whatever way we have improved uh, is from God. That God has changed our heart so that we become more and more like Him so we can enter His perfect plan. And He gave us the provision and the opportunities and also He gave us people to help us so that we can learn from other people like He has given me to teach you so that you can enter God's perfect plan. So we count all the things God has done and also when we enter His plan, He will start to bless us more and more. He give us more strength, more provision, more opportunities and rewards on earth and in heaven. So that's the grace of God. And then why? Why? The reason why many people don't enter God's plan because they don't treasure it. They don't, they just think their plan, their own plan is better. They don't treasure God's perfect plan. They don't treasure God's blessings. And then warning, when people don't enter God's perfect plan, they enter their own plan. They just want to get married their own way. They, they want to do things like some Christians, they just want to have sex before marriage. That is their own plan and it will destroy God's plan. When they destroy God's plan, Satan will enter the life and come to steal, kill and destroy. And the life will be destroyed more and more. So if a person has zero faith in God at all, then there is a problem with his life, then he will fall out of this salvation altogether. So it's possible for people who don't have a relationship with God, even if they believe in Jesus for a while, but they don't have a relationship with God, and then they, they stop praying to God, they stop obeying God, they stop serving God, and they stop the relationship with God, they can lose their salvation. We're not saved by works, we're saved by grace through faith, but when we are saved by grace through faith, then our life will change and, and have fruits. Okay, how? How can we enter God's plan? First, we desire. Yes, God's plan is the best. Believe that His plan is the best. God's plan is the most wonderful. I want to enter God's plan. I want to uh, enter God's plan because that will bring blessings to me all the time. And I want to enter His plan wonderful plan and then I will follow this I offer my body as a living sacrifice and I do not conform to the world so F offer the body as a living sacrifice that means I offer my time my energy my talents my opportunities I offer to God to follow God's ways and then uh, do not be conformed to the world do not follow the way of talking of the people of the world even some Christians in the church, some men in the church, they might be just talking about some women. We don't want to follow them. And we can remind them. We can remind them and say, this is not right. This is destroying God's plan. So they understand that this will destroy God's plan. So we, um, we don't follow the way of the world and we be transformed by the renewal of our mind. When we read the Bible, when we read the passages, we let God work in us. We let God change our life so that our thinking is in accordance with God's Word. That we follow God's will. We say, God's will is the best. God's plan is the best. And then when we start to enter God's plan, we start to be able to bless other people. We can say, thank God you are helping me. Now I start to bless one person, help one person. I thank God for that. We can be joyful for that, for the work of God. It's not proud. It's being thankful. It's God, you changed me so that I can help this person change his spiritual life. So that is God's blessing. 
So when we can help one person, we continue to help other people. Gradually, we can help a group of people. Gradually, we can help the church. And gradually, we can help all the churches in the, in the area. So that's how we enter the perfect plans of God, step by step. When we trust in God, when we follow God, and when we, when we uh, follow His perfect will. And then we also re-examine ourselves. Are there some weaknesses I need to take care of? Are there something that I need to take care of? Are there some sins I need to take care of so that I can enter God's perfect will, so that I will not be hindered by any kind of sin? Okay, now I'm going to show you what I've written so that uh, you can remember better. Just now I show you how to preach it, you know, in a uh, free way. And then in a uh, uh, you know expressive way and then God's nature related, related to his perfect plan that his perfect will of God so the Bible says his perfect will of God God has the ability to plan perfect plans so his ability is his quality and then God has the ability to make his perfect plan come true he has the ability the power his quality to make it come true when we offer our bodies to God God has the ability to change our lives so that we desire His perfect plan. So He changed our lives. He has the ability. And He is rich and He has all the resources necessary to make His perfect plan come true. And God's grace related to His perfect plan. So what grace does God have to give us in order to help us in our weakness? Uh, this are action to bless us. Uh, that we should start with God. So uh, actually help us enter His perfect plan. It should be help us to enter His perfect plan. So these are His actions. First, God prepares perfect plan for us, a perfect plan for our lives. And we can look back in our lives and find out how God has planned different wonderful things in our lives. So we look at how God has planned wonderful things. When I look back at my life, I can see how God has planned different things for my life so that I'm blessed by God and I can bless other people. He works in our hearts so that we desire to follow His perfect plan. He changes our lukewarm hearts to become zealous. So He changed our heart. He changed our heart. Now, in all, uh, uh, when you talk about God's grace, always talk about how He changes our heart. He changes our hearts so that we follow His perfect plan, that we uh, want to change our lukewarm hearts. And He gives us provision spiritual gifts and opportunities. He gave us provision so that we can enter His plan. He gave us spiritual gifts so we can enter His plan and opportunities to enter His plan. And He often gives people a second chance to enter His perfect plan even after they fail. Actually, after we fail many times, God still gives us chances. So that's God's grace. But of course, if a person continues to, to sin, he can lose uh, the opportunities opportunities especially if he is put in jail when he's put in jail then it's hard for him to be restored so we we don't want to just keep sinning it's going to destroy our lives and his perfect plan will bring great rewards so these are his what he does he prepares the perfect plan and then he works in our heart to change us to follow the plan change our lukewarm hearts to become zealous and he uh, give us a provision spiritual gifts and opportunities so we can enter god's plan he give us second chances even when we fail and he reward us when we enter his perfect plan and then why people cannot enter god's perfect plan because they don't think that god's plan is the best for them they want money and success from the world they love the world they think that believing in jesus is all they need to do. They just think, I believe, that's it. I don't have to do anything else. They forget about eternity. Many people think it's still a long time from now. Eternity is a long time from now. I don't have to think about that now. Reminder and warning. People's plan often fail and will not bring eternal blessings. When people just plan for their lives without thinking about God's plan, their lives will, be, will not be filled with God's blessing. So if they just want to follow their own plan, they won't receive God's blessings. When people just want their own marriage, their own way of earning money, 
their way of talking, their way of relating to people, their way of taking advantage of people, then they just thinking for themselves. Then they won't enter God's plan. They won't receive God's blessings. Some people invest in business and they lose all the money. When Christians invest in the world only, they will end up losing everything. They can lose their family, they can lose their, uh, their Christian life, they can lose their joy, they can lose the, uh, the relationship with God. And the worst scenario, if they have zero faith in God, they can lose salvation. If they don't trust in God anymore and they don't have let the faith bear fruit, then they can lose salvation. So this is the warning. How? How to enter God's plan? Believe that God wants us to enter the perfect plan and He will help us to do so. So we are confident that entering God's plan is not too hard. It's not too hard. We just enter step by step. B. Stop thinking that our plans are perfect. Keep asking God for direction to enter His plan. Don't think that our plan is perfect, but always seek God. Please show me your perfect plan. Now, we don't have to have, see the whole plan. We just see the next step now. And the next step is usually just blessing the people around us. Doing God's way, doing things God's way immediately. Pray now, read the Bible, bless the people, serve God right now, here. Uh, in the ways that we can do it now. That's the beginning. When we start to do that, then we can continue to enter His more perfect plan, a higher, higher plan. C, build up a strong Oh, here, B. Stop thinking that our plans are perfect. Keep asking God for direction to enter His plan. So enter a higher plan. C. Build up a strong relationship with God and pay attention to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit prompts Christians to repent and to obey God. When we get used to obeying His prompting, then we can hear Him more clearly to follow His plan. So have a close relationship with God and pay attention to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will prompt Christians to repent and obey Him. And when we get used to obeying His prompting, then we can hear Him more clearly to follow His plan. So we want to pay attention to, prompting, to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Then we will uh, hear His voice more clearly and God will speak to us and we'll follow His plan step by step and we'll enter a higher plan step by step. So build up the strong relationship, learn to hear from God, and then we can uh, enter His perfect plan. And then D, we choose to obey God to follow His prompting. For instance, for example, we choose to help other people spiritually. So when the Holy Spirit prompts us to help other people spiritually, then we do it. We don't say, oh, it's too hard. We just help a little bit. We just pray for them. We just encourage them, listen to them. The more we do, the better we become. Then we become efficient in helping other people spiritually. Then we ask God to open the way for us to help more people spiritually. Then God might open the way for us to bless more people. This is entering God's plan by obeying Him with the things we can do in our present situation. So obey God in the present situation, helping the people around us, uh, doing evangelism and helping people with spiritual life right here, forgiving people, being nice to people, uh, being nice to the family members and the Christians and, uh, and the neighbors. And so that's start entering God's plan in what we can do right now. And then we gradually go higher and higher and helping more people, blessing more people. And then E, then we seek God's strategy to bless other people more efficiently. And we seek strategies to make the best use of our life. So we want to seek strategies, how to go higher and higher, how to have more strength, more wisdom, more uh, methods from God. We ask God for the method, for the strategy, and then we can enter a higher strategy. Okay, so, um, okay, so we, we stop here now. And I hope you see that how important it is to motivate people with with God's grace, God's nature and grace instead of with the law. With the law, let me contrast, would be like this. 
that people just say you have to obey God you have to offer your body as a living sacrifice you have to obey God you're following the world you're doing nothing it's it's like a unhappy father or mother nagging the child it's not doing any good but we say God has a wonderful plan in your life God wants to do great things in life your life will have long lasting effects you can help many many people God will use you greatly greatly so do you want to do you want to and then God will give you strength when you have a close relationship with him God will give you joy and strength and a strong spiritual life that you can help other people spiritually you can strengthen other people you can you can uh, and, and you can build up people when you can build up one person then you can build up more people and then you can be used by God so may God help you to see how important it is to use grace to motivate people to use God's promises there are many promises of God so remember these promises and use the promises to encourage people <clears throat> that God has <clears throat> blessed us <clears throat> God has blessed us in so many ways <clears throat> God is working in our lives God is changing our lives God is preparing provision for us uh, spiritual gifts for us opportunities for us uh, and people to help us <clears throat> God has given us all these resources. When we obey God, we'll enter His perfect plan. And when you enter the perfect plan, you'll be happier. Many people will be happier and you'll be rewarded greatly. And actually, I want to say this. Your, your country, will, your church will become better. Your country will become better when you all follow God's perfect plan. Then your life will go higher and higher. Okay, we'll close with a prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus you are so wonderful you have given us many promises you have many blessings prepared for us when we follow you our whole life will be blessed by you thank you lord jesus help us to trust in you trust in your goodness your good nature and your grace and when we love you you bless us you you be uh, you bring blessings to our life our life will go higher and higher lord help us not to be just motivating people with the law we want to motivate people with god's grace so that people see God's goodness and they are motivated to love you and respond to your love, that they are happy to serve you and love you. And knowing that everything we do for God, God is very happy and God will reward us greatly. Thank you, Jesus, and motivate us to enjoy you all the time so that we have joy of the Lord because we know that everything we do for you, you are very happy. You for sure bless us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, God bless you. And I hope that you will uh, send your questions or responses uh, to WhatsApp or to uh, Facebook or uh, other ways that, that I can respond to you. God bless you and use you mightily and hope you understand this uh, motivation by grace. How to balance God's grace and law. Have a right balance. And God's grace is always the highest you know highest motivation the law is what to do and the grace God's grace motivate us to obey the law the law also remind us and warn us but it should be the main should not be the main motivation mission 